So last time uh, we learned how to use the Lua stack and how to communicate with Lua by pushing values and popping val or removing values from this stack. So once you know how to do that, you can basically call functions because to call a function you need to push some values. Well, I say calling function. To call a function in Lua from C, you need to push some values into Lua stack as parameters. You call the function and then you can pop the return values from the Lua stack or just leave them where they are or do whatever you need to. So um, first thing let's create our Lua state and let's close it. Let's be nice. And we're going to start off by well, we need to make a file with a, a Lua function into core, but I'm just going to define mine um, directly in here. But if you're in the real world, you'd be you'd be loading these from disk or something like that. So uh, just going to use. If you've not seen this before, that's just raw strings in C++. So. Let's make a Lua function, and you do that in Lua by saying function, and let's just do a really simple function that's just going to return a value to start with. So I'm just going to return 4. I'm going to call it return 4, I'm going to end it, and I'm going to return the value 4. So not a very special function, but that's going to be my Lua file. So I'm going to say Lua do string and I'm going to execute my Lua file. So in the real world you could actually load this file from disk and put it into a string and then do this same code here but essentially I'm just ignoring the fact that we don't want to load any files from disk or do anything weird. So that executes my, well, it initializes my Lua script, and then I well, then what I need to do is get this function so that I can call it. Now, keep in mind that we're doing all our communication through the stack, and uh, basically, a function in Lua I was saying before is a lambda, and a func and those lambdas are global. So actually, you can actually rewrite this uh, like this. And it kind of makes more sense then, is that actually we're assigning a function to the value return4. And that's return4, as you can see, is a global, unless I define it as local. So, so what we need to do to get this function to call it is we do get global that we did before. So I'm going to get a global and it's return4. So you can see why this stack thing is so important now, because now I'm using it, just the same piece of code that I used to get a number before, I'm now using it to get a function. And I think normally in Lua you wouldn't write your functions like that, you'd write them like this. But you can see when you write it the other way that, that it makes more sense that return4 is actually a global uh, and, it, and it's a function. So, so I've just taken the function and I've put it onto the stack. So I'm pushing the function onto the stack. And if I'm in any doubt, I can actually check that I can call something called is function. And I can check that the value I pushed onto the stack is the function. Now, if you remember from the last time, the last thing I pushed onto the stack is at minus one. So I'm just getting return, I'm getting the function return for and I'm checking that it's a function and I'll only execute this piece of code if I know the thing I pushed on was a function. So then what we can do is now we've got the function on the stack there's a function in Lua that allows us to call a function that's on the stack and we do that by doing Lua p call. The p stands for protected I think, not quite sure what the difference is. This other stuff, it needs the state. Um, so this function is expecting the last thing on the stack to be a function. 
So I've verified that here. So a lot of the time you'll have to consult the Lua reference to say, uh, what does this function ex uh, expect and what will it pop off the stack when it's finished? Um, and it wants, I think this is the, n is the number of arguments that we're passing to the function. Our function has no arguments. So this is the Lua function we're talking about. R is the number of return values. I've got one return value. And I think zero is the error handler, which I'm not using, but there, um, that is something you might be interested in. But I think you pass in zero to say, don't use any custom error handler. So, so that's going to call the function uh, that's on that I pushed onto the stack, the last thing I pushed onto the stack, so it's going to call return four, and that function is going to return four, and it's going to do that by pushing it onto the stack, because I said there's one return value. And keep in mind that unlike C or C++, because Lua is communicating with the stack, you can return as many values as you want, so you can return 10 values or whatever, but I'm just returning one for now. And where's that value going to be? It's going to be on the stack. So, uh, it should be the last thing that's pushed onto the stack. So we should be able to do uh, Lua two number uh, the Lua state, and again the last thing that's on the stack. If you remember from the last time, negative one is the last thing on the stack. I'm getting my number that we pushed on. Uh, should this should be four? Should be four. Yeah, we reckon. So, called the function, pushed it on, it's a function, call it, we're going to pop the value off the stack, or we're going to look at the value on the stack, we're not popping it off here, um, which we're expecting to be the number 4, and uh, should be 4 equals, should be 4. So, I've got to cast that to an int again, I think, or otherwise it will complain, but but there we go. So, let's see if that compiles, or if I've made a mess of it. Nope. Um, and let's see what we get if we run it. Uh, should be 4 equals 4. First worked, first time. That is amazing. Um, and there it is. So there are error codes that get returned from like Lua Pcall will return you an error code that you might want to look for. So it will return Lua OK if it works OK. Um, so that is why we needed to learn how to use the Lua stack. And you can see all these minus ones kind of start to make more sense. Like these might have appeared nonsense if we hadn't explained it in the last video. You'd be thinking, what's this minus one that's turning up everywhere? Um, but that is how we do it. Now we should also uh, be able to use the same technique to push parameters to that function that we can then uh, do something with, do something useful with, and then return that. So I'll probably attempt that in the next video.